Hey guys, this is going to be a quick follow-up to the TAC 2465 scope behind me. Yeah, I already swapped out my TAC 465 scope for the 2465 because it's been working fine. I do plan on replacing the Rifa caps, but otherwise I think it's pretty much good to go. Except for one thing. I was going to start using it with some of my TV projects until... Uh, I thought, I better check out what the specs are for maximum input voltage. I'm used to using the 465, which has the highest range of 50 volts per division. This only has 5 volts per division. So, if I tried to probe some of the circuits like in this Admiral I'm working on, one of them I looked at in a recent video on the vertical circuit, has a waveform of something like 300 volts peak to peak. That would not be a good idea to feed into this. I think it could handle it in terms of it wouldn't fry the scope because its maximum input is something like three, four hundred volts. However, we could not observe it on the screen, it would shoot off. Unless I get the proper probe. Now, Tektronix probes, if you want the real deal, good condition, unused, they can cost a few hundred bucks easily. And a times 100 probe, which is what I want, divides the input voltage by 100, rather than the usual input probe, which divides it by 10. Those are less common and can be pretty darn pricey, too. I found a few of them on eBay, and the really nice ones with the instructions in the pouch were about 195 I think. But somebody had some used, untested ones for 10 bucks, 15 bucks. So I bought one of those, and I thought we'd give it a try. Well, you might be thinking, what's the big deal about scope probes? I can go on Amazon, eBay, get a pair of 100 megahertz scope probes for 20 bucks straight from China. Yes, you can. And that's what this is. Came in a nice pouch. I got two of them with a bunch of different accessory tips and whatnot. It says P6100, which I think is a Tektronix part number. 100 megahertz times 10 times 1. We got a little switch on the side. We have an adjustable trimmer cap to... Uh, adjust the compensation, it's a 600 volts, cat 1. I don't trust any of that. <laughs> That's a downside. Now, for poking around with a TV or audio stuff or an old tube radio, yeah, they're fine, they're fine. But if you want to do really precise measurements, looking for really sharp, falling fast uh, edge times of a waveform down to nanoseconds, or uh, looking at high-frequency components, or you want the full voltage ratings, uh, that's where you want to get the real deal, and that's the difference. I can't look up specs on that, or not that I can trust anyways. This is a real Tektronix probe. This is a P6138A 400 megahertz probe, CAT2. This I trust. This I got lucky, and I, I think I got this as part of a bundle deal or something like that. I try to look around for... Good deals on real scope uh, tech probes. The really important thing about real tech scope probes is they have this pin that sticks out. That locks into a ring around this. And it automatically knows if it's a times 1, times 10, or times 100 probe and adjusts the scale automatically. That's important when you're using the higher or lower ranges so the scope knows what kind of probe you're using. That's what the times 100 uh probe comes in. Most scope probes divide by 10. So if you look at the, the, pro, the scope and it says it's one mega, one mega ohm input, that's low but it's not that great. 10 meg is better. So that's why you use a 10 times probe. It gives you a 10 meg input impedance. And uh, it divides the, volt, the input voltage by 10. But that's not good enough. I want to do it by a hundred, so I picked up one of these. If it's no good, well, I'm not out that much. At least I can see what one looks like. <laughs> That's interesting. Wow, I never actually saw one in person before. That's beefy. This is serious. So this can take a few thousand volts on it. And you're about to see that. Well, they really <laughs> wrapped about a mile of shrink wrap around this thing. All right, give me a minute to get this open. Uh, just about got it. I can see why these are expensive. That's 
that's substantial. This is also a bit old too. If you go to Titronic's uh, website, they list all the probes I think that they ever made, and a lot of them are flagged as obsolete, including this one and a, a number of the other Times 100 probes. They didn't make that many. Some pro, and they list uh, replacements, current production replacements, and for a lot of them, they don't have one. But anyways, this one seemed to be a little bit more plentiful. They had a few to choose from on eBay, so. So a few things different about it. One, the cable's beefier. It's also a heck of a lot longer. Boy, I thought in the listing it said it was six feet or three feet or something. I think this is 12 feet long, something like that. I don't need it to be that long, but okay. Uh, so everything's beefier. I think that's to give you the higher voltage protection on it. This is also a bit old, but hey, uh, it says it's untested. Now, for what I'm using this for, I don't care that it's full bandwidth or specs. I want to look at signals on TVs that are too high a voltage for me to safely put into my fancy scope. This is the business end, and then part of it goes into the scope. This is beefy. I imagine this is where the voltage divider action comes in or something like that. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can get right in there. Okay, so it looks like there's a trimmer resistor. I assume you can use that to adjust the scale and have a trimmer cap for compensation. So I'm thinking there's not a whole lot to it. Why is it so expensive? It's because of all the engineering and all the testing and the, the, the science behind this. It's not just slapping a couple resistors and capacitors into some plastic. I see there's a locking position from this thing. So, it says it's untested. We are going to test it. I've got to say, it's in really, really good condition. I wasn't sure from his photos what to expect, but uh, geez. Yeah, uh, if this works, it's a heck of a deal. No, I didn't get the manual and all that, but I could find that online if I really cared to see how to actually calibrate it or, or all that stuff. Well, a few thoughts immediately. Here's the probe we were just looking at. It's very thin, very pliable. I believe they use special wire in here that's, I think, just a single strand of very flexible copper or something like that. This is far more substantial. I imagine that's for the higher voltage rating of a few thousand volts. Also a pretty serious business end here. Screw end. Uh, the newer scopes have a sharp point here so you can probe around circuits. I imagine there were different tips you could get with this. This is your standard hook, which is fine with me. So you just clip that on. And I like that it's bigger and beefier and chunkier, good for working on vintage electronics. And a really chunky part is this, is where it actually connects to the scope. So what is in here? Well, we can back this off and pull the shroud back. There we go. So, I don't have the manual, I'm sure I can find it online. That will be to calibrate it. I imagine that's a variable resistor. That plus that resistor was a precision 1% resistor. I imagine it forms a voltage divider. Trimmer cap to get the maximum bandwidth response out of it. So I could throw in a little inductor in there. Some nice machining on the flip side. This is what you pay your extra money for. All the science, the engineering, the experimenting they did to make this probe with certain characteristics and the confidence that it actually meets all the published specs. So, just hook that up to your scope and away we go. So how am I going to test it? I'm not going to put a thousand volt waveform into this thing. I'm going to test it off by using a lower voltage waveform and then start going to higher voltage waveforms to build up my confidence that this is actually is what it says it is. <laughs>
Now in order to try this out, you're getting a sneak peek at an upcoming project, which is an electrostatic TV. This is nice because we can go to one of the output tubes, for example, the vertical output. On the grid we have 7 volts peak to peak. But the output is going to have about 300 volts peak to peak. So, right now I have it on the grid of the output tube. And the highest range, well, I don't even see anything. Okay, so this little symbol down here, 5 squiggle V, I assume that means 5 volts per division AC mode, which is indeed what I'm in, and we just have a flat line. I'm going to lower the range, and yeah, starting to see a sawtooth. Fantastic. There we go. Alright, now that's the low voltage input. Now let's see about checking the output, which is a whole other matter. Let's see, we're pin 5 for that. Alrighty. Nothing. The set is still being worked on, it's a little flaky. But it looks like I have normal deflection on the scope, so that says 1 volt per division, which should really be 100 volts per division, and we are 3 divisions high. So 300 volts, peak to peak, and that's, just, it says 285 on the, on the service info. So yeah, I think this is working exactly as it should. And that's 50 volts per division. It's just shy of 6, so I mean, yeah, that 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 is correct. I maybe need to calibrate it a little bit to get it exactly right, but this is close enough for me. That means I can use my fancy new scope on this old equipment and not worry about frying it. That is awesome. So actually, in the highest range, so yeah, we have 500 volts per division on this range. Uh, I don't think there's anything in this, in any vintage TV that I could go to aside from an anode output that would fry the scope as long as I use this probe. So that was definitely a win. Alrighty, so, uh, you'll be seeing this scope now in all of my TV series. Thanks to this probe. So if you want to use a scope with a vintage TV, be it magnetic or electrostatic, where you've got waveforms that are potentially a few hundred volts or more in amplitude, get yourself a times 100 probe. Yes, they are out there. This in particular is a Titronic 6009. There are others. I will put a link in the description to all of the Tektronix probes that they ever made. Now, of course, it's just Tektronix. There is Hewlett Packard. There are others as well. But these seem to be the most common that are out there. And you can use a Tektronix probe and an HP scope and vice versa, as long as the impedance is matched and, and whatnot. All right. So that's going to be it. Thanks for watching.